the PWI 500 has come out for 2022. And I thought we would, you know, take a look at it and uh, just kind of see who's in it. We're going to take a look at the top 10. I think the top 10 is the biggest ones we can look at. I do want to give a little shout out to the fact that Matt Cardona is number 13. He really has deserved his spot. So let's do this. So number 10, as you saw, we're going to reveal the top 10 right here. Number 10, Jonathan Gresham. Now, again, we need to say here that the evaluation period for why these people are in the top 10 is from July 1st of last year to June 30th of this year. That was the period. Everything after that does not count, which we will see very soon. Jonathan Gresham. He was final Ring of Honor champion during this period. Uh, well, actually, he wasn't. Uh, not at the beginning of this period. At the beginning of this period, he was still doing stuff with the foundation and all that. Then he became the ROH champion while the company was gone, beating Bandito. And uh, he went on a pretty solid run, I have to say. Uh, he did really good. And then ever since he lost the belt to Claudio, uh, and he was granted his release from Ring of Honor, we haven't heard much of Jonathan Gresham. So, number 10. I suppose I can see Jonathan Gresham at number 10. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, we have Big E at number 9. Uh, Big E, uh, during this evaluation period, he came to be champion. Cashed in his money in the bank. He was Mr. Money in the Bank. Cashed in Mr. Money in the Bank to become WWE champion. Uh, and then he lost the belt at the very beginning of 2022. And... He got injured. And that was pretty much it for Big E. So, really, I would say Big E should be lower. Yes, he did win WWE Championship, right? He did win the WWE Championship. He did start this with Money in the Bank. But his run, I don't remember anything. I don't know anything memorable from it at all. Uh, number eight was El Hijo del Fantasma. Um, not Fantasma. That's Santos Escobar. El Hijo del Fantasma from AAA. I can't comment because I wasn't really paying attention to him. So... I cannot comment. At number seven, Brian Danielson. Arguably, I would put him way higher. Uh, because this evaluation period has been his entire AEW run so far. Oh, you know, we have the debut at All Out. The draw with Kenny Omega. The two matches with Hangman Page for the title. The match with Eddie Kingston. The uh, joining the Blackpool, making, you know, the Blackpool Combat Club with Mox. You know... Uh, anarchy in the arena you know all that stuff and um, i would so put him higher i would put him way way higher on this list number six is cody rhodes uh when we started this i believe cody rhodes was in the middle of his feud of malachi black which was not a good point for him because he should have turned heel and he didn't then of course uh we had him and sammy have that we had that uh, TNT title thing where Cody was the whole interim champion thing with Sammy Guevara where Cody should have absolutely turned heel there too but they just didn't do it uh, we did get the cool fantastic ladder match with him and Sammy Guevara then Cody left AEW and went to WWE debuting at Wrestlemania beating Seth Rollins they had a bit of a feud um, and then of course we had the thing where Cody went to Hell in a Cell and his whole like side was just purple uh, so Cody number six, I can see him being in the top, uh, 10. Yeah. Number five is Bobby Lashley. I believe he started the evaluation period as WWE champion, didn't he? Uh, I know nothing about Bobby Lashley, nothing about Bobby Lashley's WWE run, title run, nothing about anything he's done in this period has made, like, stuck out to me. Nothing. He's like, oh, Bobby Lashley did this on Raw the other day. And I was like, oh, I'll check that out. Nothing. So Bobby, I don't. I don't think he belongs here at all. Number four, Hangman Adam Page. Oh, boy. Yes. During this evaluation period, Hangman was rocking on all cylinders. We had, during this period, him returning and winning the number one contender match, that amazing ladder match on Dynamite. Then he beat Kenny Omega to win the world title, and then we had his entire world title run. We had the great matches with Brian Danielson, Adam Cole, Dante Martin, Lance Archer, he just had his great run. And then, of course, we saw the end of his run. Uh, so, Hangman Adam Page, I think he definitely deserves to be in the top five. 
Absolutely. In fact, I would put Brian Daniels in top five if I could. Number three is, oh boy, CM Punk. Again, the evaluation period ended June 30th. So we're not talking about anything that he's done after. Because if we're talking about that, you get this man off this entire list. But CM Punk, we had his debut. The comeback match against Darby Allin. All of his matches on TV where he was, you know, like actually working. <laughs> we had the thing with Eddie Kingston. We had the feud with MJF. Uh, we had him winning the world title from Hangman Page. Uh, I mean, yeah, I top five, absolutely. Kazuchika Okada at number two. Yes, Okada, he won the IWGP world title from Jay White, I believe, right? Was it Jay White? I think it was Jay White. I don't recall. Or was it Will Ospreay? I'm blanking on who he won the belt from. Why am I blanking on this? I saw the match. It was fantastic. <laughs> um, he won it, and he defended it against Zack Sabre Jr., Will Ospreay. Like, he was just putting on great matches with this IWGP title. In, especially in a weird environment still where in Japan they weren't allowed to cheer. You could only just, only just clap. And then he dropped the belt to Jay White. Um, who I think Jay White... Where is Jay White? Jay White's number 23? What the hell? Put that guy up higher. Um, and then he showed up at Forbidden Door. Huge pop. Would have loved if he won it. Of course, he did have to leave because his wife was giving birth to their child. And then G1 Climax. He won G1 Climax. But sadly, that didn't quite factor into the valuation period because it mainly happened after. But yeah, Okada number two, absolutely. Number one, Roman Reigns. I don't really see anyone else topping. I had a feeling like, oh, Roman Reigns is probably going to be number one because he's been doing the bloodline thing, yeah. Uh, again, during this entire valuation period, he's been universal champion, beating everyone, all that type of stuff. Um... So yeah, I don't think I need to explain why I think Roman Reigns deserves to be number one. And that's it. Top 10 of PWI 500. Do you agree with the uh, 100%? I mean, uh, the top 10? Let me know in the comments down below. Uh, if you could make your top 10, who would it be? That'd be cool to know. And uh, I'll see you all next time.